Well, overclocking graphics cards has kind of gotten out of fashion in the last few years because there wasn't really much potential to overclock them, actually, or rather overclock them without any heavy modifications. I guess if you were modifying them, like raising the power limit on the hardware side or some other software mods, then it was possible to, well, get better results, but still, you couldn't touch the like early 2010s where you were able to get 30% performance gains out of a graphics card. Those days, unfortunately, I think are over, but you can actually get your graphics card, or at least in my case, your AMD graphics card, to overclock a lot better or reach a lot higher clock speed than you would actually do when using the standard overclocking methods. By that I don't mean any hardware modifications or any BIOS modifications which you ha would have done in the past, but uh, there is a tool which probably many of you that are using ND graphics cards have heard of. It is the More Power tool and uh, that allows you to raise power limits artificially um, over the spec that is given within the graphics card BIOS and therefore also the overclocking tools and such. This gives you the benefit that you could raise the power limit in such a way that this isn't a restriction anymore at all. And to say that is a restriction is kind of the case on every graphics card that is on the market right now, um, except for some custom designs which have a really high power limit, especially on the Nvidia side. But on the AMD side, most cards are limited by power quite drastically. Same goes for the 6650 I have shown in a few videos. And today we want to look at what we actually can get out of this card when using that tool in addition to our normal overclocking methods. Well, how does a card work that is well, throttled by power? Until it does reach its power limit, which in this case is 142 watts. It will run at 1.2 volts and depending if the temperature is low enough, so if the temperature is below, I think 89 degrees on the core, then it will not throttle the clock speed. And um, until it is under that and under the, those 165 watts, it is going to deliver close to the advertised maximum boost frequency, which is 27 something, 100 megahertz on this card. But now comes the issue. A lot of games actually pull more than 142 watts from this card when you are, well, using higher resolutions, higher detail levels, etc. Or in general, if you are just using your graphics card to its full potential, uh, then I'd say maybe 80% of the games are going to be requiring over 150 watts from this card, basically, because that's the number I saw um, when raising the power limit. Yes, you could raise the power limit to 162 on this card with tools like MSI Afterburner or the AMD integrated adrenaline software. So then you would be able to raise that to this level, but that would still limit you in some applications. And there are quite a few games I have noticed, I would say in my library, at least half of them would still run into that power limit when I overclock the card. When I would leave it at stock uh, settings, well, it isn't that heavily restricted by that 162 watts, but if I went and turned up the clock speed again, and especially the memory clock, because that's another factor that is going to combine with the GPU and is increasing the power draw from the complete card, then you can get quite close or above those 162 and the card will throttle again. And that in some cases quite heavily. You notice that in some benchmarks like 3D Mark Time Spy and in some games actually, like Battlefield 5, I think, throttles quite heavily on those cards. In 3D Mark Time Spy, it throttles down to 2450 to 2550 if you leave the card on completely stock settings. So that's not really that great. If you overclock the card, you can reach 2550 to 2650, which still is a lot below the 2900 that you actually set within the tools. So um, yeah, and that's where the more power tool comes in. It basically modifies the restrictions that Windows sees or that are present by the driver or presented by the card to the driver 
and interferes with them and modifies them and makes the driver actually think that the card can pull more power than it should actually. You can also see that the card then achieves its 1.2 volts constantly. So the card does not throttle down in any way and only would if your cooler wasn't up to the task, which is why we used this Arctic cooling cooler on our card because the stock cooler or the sapphire pulse cooler is just not really strong enough for cooling it. Again, I would recommend using a good custom design if you are going to do that because uh, yeah, going from in my case 145 watts stock to about 180, 200 watts is quite a big jump and some custom coolers might not be able to handle that and therefore you might need a bigger cooler or at least touch your fan profiles to get the card below I'd say 80 degrees and uh, yeah so that the hotspot also doesn't reach like 100 degrees. As for longevity of the card, well the actual thing is that you don't really raise the voltage of the card because the card is designed to run at 1.2 volts in general. And so this isn't really a huge deal as the voltage is the same as the car, as when the card would be running with its normal specs. It would just consume more power and therefore the current within the GPU is higher, which yes, can lead to some accelerated wear, but it's not like the card is going to die within one year, except for like 10 years. It's more like the card is lasting nine years in comparison to 10. So that's not really relevant for this case. In terms of performance, how much do we actually gain? Well, in games, we reach a difference of about seven to 10% performance difference between the stock configuration and the actual overclock configuration. Depending on the game, going from the standard overclock, so the maximum we could reach without the more power tool and the maximum we could reach with the more power tool, there was not that much gain and it was rather depending on the application. In 3 Mark, for example, we were able to achieve quite a big difference up to like three, four percent between those two scenarios. But in games that difference was a little bit less. But you are going to notice that your minimum FPS are probably going to be a bit higher because the, the clock speed and therefore also voltages aren't going to fluctuate as much. So the frame rate might be more stable. So you might get a benefit there and then also only at a cost of like five to 10 watts more power consumption above the already overclocked state. Because as I said again, most of the games actually don't really benefit that much about the normal overclock we actually performed earlier. But if there isn't that much to gain for, does it actually make sense to do it? Well, you don't really have any negative side effects on it, aside from maybe some extra noise or maybe some extra temperatures, but if you have a good cooler, well, there's nothing that speaks against that. While yes, you could also uh, reduce the voltage within MS Afterburner and stuff, you will not be able to get the same clock speeds and may lose performance while doing that. Um, raising the voltage within the MPT more power tool does result in some bugginess and you really cannot do that and I have tried to do it in small steps and it doesn't work. So on my card at least, I have not found a way to get that working correctly. So you cannot overclock further than this without any hardware modifications or maybe any BIOS modifications themselves. So this is about the limit you can go for on this card. You also gotta t bear in mind that the lower you go in temperatures, so if you are going from maybe like 80 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius edge, as we did, for example, by switching the cooler out from this to this, uh, you are going to gain stability and overclocking headroom. A card that is running cooler can overclock better than a card that is running a little bit hotter. It may not be by that much, but it can be in some cases, maybe 20 to 40 megahertz even. So if you have like a high-end AMD card and you maybe already have a water cooling loop, consider also water cooling the graphics card as that not only increases performance, but also will decrease power consumption as a cooler card also consumes less power. Not by much again, but there is a difference. 
As for power consumption, while well, yes, I said there wasn't going to be any massive wear on the GPU itself, there's also not going to be m massive issues with the VRM deteriorating because most of the current VRM setups are capable of handling 300, 400 amps without any issues because they have most cases at least six phases that can handle uh, 50 to 60 amps at minimum. So they are well above the 200 amps that you're going to pull maybe if it really comes to that while uh, overclocking in these uh, scenarios were actually discussed. So that is not a problem. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, if you wanna know more about the more power tool, have any questions about this tool, let me know in the comments below. I will be happy to answer any questions that appear and otherwise I wish you a nice day and goodbye.